please join in our entrance verse, which can be found on page three of the Miss Lutz. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say, rejoice. Indeed, the Lord is here. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And may we Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so to, to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Have mercy on us, O Lord. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, who see how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's nativity, <clears throat> enable us, we pray, to attain the joys of so great a salvation, and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. book of the prophet Zephaniah. Shout for joy, O daughter Zion. Sing joyful, o, joyfully, O Israel. Be glad and exult with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has removed the judgment against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You have no further misfortune to fear. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear not, O Zion. Be not discouraged. The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty Savior. He will rejoice over you with gladness and renew you in his love. He will sing joyfully because of you as one sings at festivals. The word of the Lord. Amen. Our response. <coughs> Cry out with joy and gladness, for among you is the great and holy one of Israel. Cry out with joy and gladness. For among you is the great and holy one of Israel. God indeed is my Savior. I am confident and unafraid. My strength and my courage is, in, is the Lord, and he has been my Savior. With joy you will draw water at the fountain of salvation. For I am with joy and gladness. For among you is the great and holy one of Israel. Give thanks to the Lord. Acclaim his name. Among the nations make known his deeds. Proclaim how exalted is his name. Cry out with joy and gladness, for among you is the great holy one of Israel. Sing praise to the Lord for his glorious achievement. Let this be known throughout all the earth. Shout with exultation, O city of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. Cry out with joy and gladness, for among you is the great and holy one of Israel. A reading from second from the letter of Saint Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord always. I shall say it again, rejoice. Your kindness should be known to all. The Lord is near. Have no anxiety at all, but in everything. By prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Lord, you, Lord. The crowds asked 
to John the Baptist, what should we do? He said to them in reply, whoever has two cloaks should share with the person who has none. And whoever has food should do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they said to him, Teacher, what should we do? He answered them, Stop collecting more than what is prescribed. Soldiers also asked him, And what is it that we should do? He told them, Do not practice extortion. Do not falsely accuse anyone, and be satisfied with your wages. Now the people were filled with expectation, and all were asking in their hearts whether John might be the Christ. John answered them all, saying, I am baptizing you with water, but one mightier than I is coming. I am not worthy to loosen the thongs of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fan is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire, extorting them in many other ways. He preached good news to the people. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning. Today in the church we have the option on this the third week of Advent to wear the rose vestment of which I do. I often get a chuckle uh, from priests who say, oh, you know, wearing rose, it's pink, and blah, 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 blah. Or people who will look up and say, ah, Father, you're in pink, ha, ha, ha. Look, you know, I, I, my manhood card was ripped up in my face years ago when I had to sit in a vet's office waiting for my poodle's toenails to dry. <laughs> so, 10 years and 2 degrees, and I'm waiting for a poodle's toenails to dry. Yeah. So, none of that bothers me anymore. Eh? Yeah, whatever. But, I wanted to continue our examination of the childlike attitude that we are called to have. Uh, and I wanted to look at it today from two lines from sacred scripture from St. John's Gospel. John 14, 28, Jesus says a bunch of things and he concludes with, for the Father is greater than I. And then in John's 11th chapter, verse 41, he concludes with, Father, I thank you for hearing me. For many of us being raised in the South, we were raised with manners, being told that we must be mannerly. Manners were emphasized because they conveyed respect to the person to whom we were speaking and also to the family from uh, who raised us. We were taught to say please, yes ma'am, and no ma'am, and thank you. Often I've heard people say, of a young person. Boy, that is a good young person. They're mannerly. Their family raised them well. And I've also, Chuck, uh, and I, I say this laughingly, uh, I've also heard older people say, oh, don't call me sir or ma'am. You make me feel old. And I wanted to, and I just kept my mouth shut, but you sit there and you want to say, but you are. <laughs> you know, but it's no, it's a respect. It's not, it has to deal with age. I mean, my gosh, I know, I've listened to grandparents say yes, sir, to their grandkids. It's respect toward the individual that you are speaking to, toward the family that you raised, who raised you. And Jesus in doing so, in those two passages, shows respect. He shows respect, one, for God, who is greater than himself. As we would show respect to someone greater than I, yes, sir, yes, ma'am. And then he shows 
thankfulness to God for the blessings he has received. Again, the matters. Thank you. If we reflect upon that reality of, Father, you are greater than myself, Jesus' words, I'm paraphrasing. I, on Monday, as I was putting this together, the homily, I was thinking and praying. And I remember years ago, now please, the person is not a member of our parish, so no, 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 don't think that you start looking at your neighbor. But I remember years ago a person, I, I was given a homily, and I used the example of global warming. And uh, when I wrote this Monday, I couldn't remember exactly what I had said, but uh, I, I, it occurred to me during the week, as I really thought about it, I said, what did I say that got them so upset? Because they were upset with me. I took the issue too lightly. And I, and I thought about it, and I realized what I had said. I had uh, said, you know, for that, uh, it was one of the hurricanes coming, and I said, you know, I can't figure it out. Hurricanes a week out, and they can't tell you where it's going to go, so you have to wait and see where Jim Cantori of the Weather Channel is at. Then that's where you know the land. But yet that same computer model will tell me what the temperature of the Earth is going to be 100 years from now. How is that possible? And I remember the person got all upset with me. And I, what I was trying to do, I remember in that homeland, I did it poorly, probably and that was not the best example, was to explain how dependent we all are and how there's always something greater than ourselves and how can we, the lesser, always change or affect the greater. Can the clay pot tell its master it does not, the potter, that it doesn't want to be a pot, that it wants to be something else? No. So how can I change something greater than myself? When I stop and realize, you know, if I'm honest, and I'll be honest with you, I can't even control my mouth. How can I control the environment or the universe? How can I control the country? How can I control our government? How can I control all these other things when I am, can't even control the way I speak? So how can we believe that we are independent, that we can control the greater? Jesus said it so wisely. The Father is greater than I. There is always something greater than us. There is always a level of, in, of dependence that we possess. Whether that be from our childhood when we are dependent upon our parent or parents. Whether that be adulthood. Because I find sometimes when you're <coughs> watching families grow. When the child is young, the parents take care of the child. The child is dependent upon the parent or the parents. As age progresses, many times the roles reverse and the parent becomes dependent upon the child. And you see children who take care of their parents, some in a very, I mean a beautiful way, the, the way they dedicate themselves to take care of their parents as their parents are uh, toward the end of their earthly lives. And I stop and I think that's a, a tremendous blessing. It does not diminish the dignity of the child nor the parent, whether it be the parent taking care of the child or the child later taking care of the parent. In fact, it affirms that dignity. That's why Jesus came upon this earth to be dependent so he can affirm that part of our Christian, our, our, our human situation, that throughout our lives, we will always be dependent. We were dependent in the beginning. We're dependent now upon someone in many instances. And as we get older, we'll be dependent upon someone else to help us. There's nothing wrong with that. It's very freeing to understand that. And Jesus understood that completely. Therefore, because he is dependent, he can't change the greater. He can't really affect the greater in God. He's dependent. 
he's able to show that beautiful level of respect that we are all called to show. He's able to say, Father, I thank you. Thank you. I thank you for hearing me because you always hear me. And that's that level of childhood manners and respect that we learned when we were children that we need to continue to possess even as adults toward God. That we should not limit our thanking of God to one day a week or to less than an hour or a week depending upon how long I go. We should not limit our thanking of God until when we're riding in the automobile on the way to work or when we have this moment. Our thankfulness to God should be a continual thing. Every moment of our waking life, we should be able to, at any moment, just stop and say thank you. Because everything, God, is a gift from you. It's not that you give me something that I want, but you give me everything. Literally, everything that I see today is a gift. God gave each one of you. He gave me the environment just as a gift to me. And he did the same for you. Everything I touch today is a gift. This pulpit, the wood that it came from, the tree, that was a God's gift so that I could have this today. Everything I taste, the food, is God's gift to me. What I hear today, it's God's gift to me. So my whole being should be one of thank you, God. Thank you for taking care of me today. That's the attitude that Jesus possessed. That's the childlike attitude that we are called to possess. To realize God is greater. And that's okay. But I should thank him. For everything. And that is the focus today. I just hope and I'll conclude that at the end of my earthly life, at the end of your earthly life, that we may at those last moments with the full knowledge of just how great God has been to us, we may be able to depart this earth with the words, thank you. Thank you for everything. May Almighty God be with you. May He bless you. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. <laughs>
that Christ may visit his holy church and keep watch over her always. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, 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 Lord. That under her, the protection of Christ, our times may be peaceful. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, 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 Lord. That Christ may banish disease, drive out hunger, and ward off every affliction. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, 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 Lord. Lord. That as witnesses to Christ's love before all, we may abide in the truth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in our community, both here and present, and those watching on video, who are suffering, whether from physical, emotional, or mental illnesses, that they may be comforted by the resurrected Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our heart, for all the intentions spoken and unspoken, all those listed in our parish prayer book, um, joined through the intercession of St. Thomas the Apostle. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let us pray for Henry Kovitz and his family today, for whom this Mass is being offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Offering all our prayers to the Father, let us conclude with the prayer in honor of the Blessed Trinity. Glory <coughs> be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth that work with human hands will become for us the bread of life. Bless you, God of Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Blessed are you, God of all creation. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work through Christ our Lord. Amen. The 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets were told him, the virgin mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glories without end, we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of heaven and earth are full of your glory, of the Son and the Christ. Let us receive the promise in the name of the Lord, and the Son of the Christ. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts and pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, entered willingly into his passion. He took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come. <coughs> Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. Give me thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring to her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs <coughs> to eternal life, May praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the sacred command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. So we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace, the Lord, be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Lamb of God. We take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God. We take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God. We take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. <coughs> Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Please join in our communion verse. It can be found in your missalettes on page 101. <coughs> Say to the faint of heart, be, be strong, strong and do not fear. Behold, our God will come and he will save us.
Let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feast. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks. Before you leave, two quick things. The first, uh, apparently the diocese would like us to announce uh, there have been some scam emails coming out from different places within the diocese. Uh, the latest is you get an email from Little Flower or a Gmail, Little Flower at Gmail, uh, from Father asking you to send money, he's in desperate need of help. Uh, first off, Father John, my God, he does an email, okay? So you know that's gotta be fake right there. <laughs> and he's gonna ask you for money? <laughs> yeah, so if you ever get an email from an archdiocesan thing that says, yeah, we're from the archdiocese, we need help, send money, yeah, spam it, okay? That's, we don't do that, all right? And uh, secondly, although I let Monique change my mass schedule uh, for Immaculate Conception from 7 to 6, we will not. She will not change my mass schedule on Christmas Day from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. I'm not going to be here 9 p.m. Christmas Day is 9 a.m., please, 9 a.m., okay? All right, so y'all can scratch that and bullet it. Okay, other than that, y'all have a great day, and I hope you have a good week. Thank you. Prayer to St. Michael. Holy Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. To you, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the divine power, thrust into hell, Satan and all the other evil spirits who wander through the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Divine praise, protection against storms, hurricanes, and other disasters. Blessed be God. Blessed be His holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, your God, your true name. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of Jesus. 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 Blessed be the great mother of God, the great mother of holy. Blessed be your holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be your glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, the Virgin Mother. Blessed be Saint Joseph, our most chaste spouse. Blessed be God and His angels and His saints.